This video is about the bicycle saddle. My opinion about which one you should select, especially if you want to be comfortable. Um, I have struggled for many years and I've gone through heaven knows how many dozens of saddles. So I think I know what I'm talking about. And I think I have just the right solution for somebody who's looking for comfort on a small wheel bicycle. Now I release videos every few weeks. I'm not getting money from anybody so I'm completely impartial. If you're interested in small wheel tech, small bike tech, e-bike tech, that sort of stuff, I recommend that you subscribe. If you want to be notified of every single video that comes out, please hit the bell icon as well. Bike saddles used to be very comfortable and supportive. If you look at the early designs, even into the middle of the 20th century, even if the, into the earlier years of the post-war period, you'll see saddles that are wide. They are typically made of leather that eventually is going to mold to your body shape. They have springs to support them. They are generally really comfortable, but of course they are heavy. Modern bicycle saddle designs are far less comfortable. Yes, they are very light, but they are also very narrow. They are not really supportive. In general, they are influenced by bicycle racing and especially the road racing bike, which has been very fashionable and is becoming more and more popular, especially in the US. These saddles may look good, they may look cool, they may be very light, but uh, they are not necessarily the best choice for somebody who is a commuter, somebody who goes on touring for days on end, somebody who uses bicycles casually. In general, I'm not uh, a fan of road bike racing and the kind of personalities that ride these bikes. They have adopted all kinds of not just very tiny and very lightweight saddles, but weird positions, unusual ways of riding bicycles. Now, if your intention is to um, transition from a male to a she male or lady boy or something like that then this could be a good non-surgical solution and it's certainly going to make you go a lot faster but in general this kind of approach to riding is not going to serve uh, most people well if you're just an average rider if you're not uh, a professional racer if you have not forbid one to remain a male then it's probably not the best choice that you, you choose one of these typical racing saddles. In some cases riding on these narrow saddles basically sitting on your loins for hours on end can lead to prostate damage but something that happens a lot more often is urethral stricture. If you've never heard about this medical problem I suggest you look it up it's really not a nice thing to have and not a nice thing to have fixed. Even if you're a female, if you, have, if you don't have a prostate, even then sitting in the loin area is going to traumatize sensitive tissue. So it's really not a good idea to buy these seats even if they are a pound or pound and a half uh, lighter than a comfortable saddle. The correct way to sit on any bicycle saddle or any seat for that matter is to sit on your sit bone. Your sit bones are where the two red arrows are pointing. They are at the bottom of your hip bone and they are the place where all the pressure should go. You should not apply any pressure in between them into the loins whether you are a male or a female. Consider the support you get from the average scooter the lower level scooters that are only 50 cc in, in power have a maximum speed of 25 miles an hour. In other words, they are basically operating at bicycle speeds. And look at what you're getting. You're getting a much bigger feather tire than you would get on a bicycle. You have a suspension no bicycle can match. And on top of this, there is this cushy huge seat that you are sitting on. How can you compare this kind of a support, uh, this kind of a comfort to what you're getting on a bicycle? 
Bicycle saddles typically fall into three categories. The one you see on the left is a typical narrow racing saddle. It provides practically no support at all. It's only there to allow you to be connected to the bicycle, to not to fly off of it as you pedal. The one, the saddle that you see in the center is the kind of size that you typically see on most bicycles. If you buy a Brompton, a Birdie, an Alex Moulton, almost any bike that's not a racing bike, it's going to come with this medium width set, uh, saddle. The one that you see on the right is what I would call a wide saddle or a comfort saddle. This is very much in the fashion of saddles from the 50s, 40s, 30s and earlier on and these are more comfortable, much heavier and typically come with a spring in the bottom. A racing saddle is going to force you to sit on the soft tissue that's located between the two seat bones. It is a very uncomfortable position and it is likely to cause medical damage over the years if you keep on riding like this. Especially if you, if you ride on bumpy roads, if you have a bicycle that's not so well suspended, if you ride a small wheel bicycle, or you're riding on tiny tires that are pumped up to 100 or 110 psi. Medium width saddle is typically sold as a kind of an elegant compromise between the comfort saddles and the racing saddles. It is wider than the racing saddle and it's not as heavy as a, as a spring supported the big saddle but ultimately you are still not sitting on your seat bones. It pinches into your tissue and it's really uncomfortable. No matter how much you try to break in the saddle, it's never going to feel right. The full width comfort saddle is the one that is the first in the series that is actually supporting your seat bones. Unless you, are, you have a narrower hip or maybe average hip, you're still going to be sitting kind of close to the edge of it. I mean it depends, you have to take measurements, but at least you're going to be sitting on something that supports you where you are supposed to be taking pressure which is your sit bones. Um, I would recommend if you do get this saddle to not break it in at all especially if you're getting a, a leather uh, saddle from Brooks which in my opinion are the highest quality of this type of saddle that you can get. They also are extremely durable and reliable and look great on a nice classic bicycle. If you have a nice handmade top quality bicycle like a Brompton or a Moulton, even a Birdie, it looks really nice on it and if you just uh, grease it with the grease that, that Brooks sells, that's enough. There's no need to break it in because the more you break it in, the more you are going to sink into it and sinking into it is not what you want. It's really not helpful. You want the support of a large flat leather seat that has springs in it. These are the seats that most people are familiar with. In my opinion, I wouldn't worry about having an extra pound or pound and a half. I would get the widest seat if, if you want that. However, there is an even wider design that is relatively recent. This is the seat I call the butterfly seat and it supports your seat bones and have a lot of space around them so you're really comfortable sinking into the seat. I have I have ridden on all of these saddles and I would say that the wide saddle is the first one that actually offers some kind of a decent support but once you sit on the, the butterfly saddle it's so wide so well sculpted it is so well designed even though it's a very cheap saddle it only costs like 50 bucks it has a spring in it which is really nowhere near Brooks quality so the whole city is not really up to Brooks standards in term of, uh, terms of, of physical beauty or, or manufacturing quality but it is just an extremely well designed seat that offers near motorcycle like support. In fact there are some motorcycles that have kind of flat not very well cushioned but really wide and well sculpted seats that look like this one. If you take a closer look you can see that there's plenty of space around the seat bones so your t tissue, your glute muscles, the fatty tissue, whatever you have has plenty of support. There's plenty of space here and there is a groove in the middle which is really supportive especially for male 
riders. As you can see on this picture, I have I have had both of these seats. Uh, they are both pretty good. I would not go back to any kind of uh, seat, not even for the wide to the uh, wide Brooks seat from what I have now so I'm sticking with the butterfly seat I recommend that you check it out I'm going to place a link into the description so that you can check out some of these better quality seats if you are worried about the extra weight that you have to put up with I recommend that you replace the the seat post with maybe a titanium piece to lighten the bicycle elsewhere in other words um, Lightening the bicycle by riding on narrow seats and uncomfortable racing seats is just a gambling with your health, so I don't recommend it. This is it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon as well.